Welcome to Tech Notice, guys. I know it's been a while since the unboxing of the Pilot Fly Adventurer, but you know, life happens, and then you want to get proper usage and mileage out of it before you want to start talking about it. So, this is going to be a proper long term review and the first review because I haven't done any other of the Pilot Fly Adventurer. We're talking about the good sides, bad sides, and you're gonna see some actual tests of the footage, how much and how does it stabilize the footage. Some of the things that you should know about this is that this Pilot Fly Adventurer is miles smaller than the Ronin S. That's why it's called Adventure as well. You can take it anywhere you want. Whereas DJI Ronin is a bit bigger. And the 45 degree roll axis design is actually patented by Pilotfly and it was made by them before and DJI copied off them. So these guys were in the game first. So let's get some of the specs out of the way. It's a 3-axis gimbal, very lightweight. It has a payload of 3.2 kilograms, which is a lot for something that small. It's got a 45 roll axis design, so you can actually have a direct view to the camera monitor. It does have Bluetooth, it does have Dutch roll axis if you want to do that. It has an operating time or battery time of six to eight hours. The battery is detachable, which means that if one of the batteries runs out, you can just pop the next one in and boom, there is no charging time actually needed. You can keep shooting. The operating temperature is minus 15 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. There are zoom buttons on the gimbal over here. There is a joystick. There's also a record and the shutter release button on the gimbal. Now I'd like to jump straight away to the things that I do like about this Kim gimbal. So first of all, I very, very much like the roll axis design where I can see the camera monitor. So it's not in front of your camera screen like that, but actually when you're shooting, you can see the camera monitor. It's so useful. Secondly, high payload. You can put pretty much any mirrorless camera on here and it can carry the weight, even the DSLRs. So one of the things that I do like to mention is that if you have one of those cameras that has a flip out screen and flips out to the left side, as you can see over here, the motor is on the left side, which means that it would hit the motor and you can't really do that. Don't worry, uh, if you go on the Pilotfly website and actually buy into the gimbal, then you can literally buy the gimbal that has the motor on the other side and boom, you're sorted. One of the key points why I really, really like this gimbal is the usability. Now they have designed and, and thought about the guys were actually using it on the field and, and how to make their life easier. One of the things that I didn't think I was going to use that much and I like that much was the record button on the handle over there. That record button is so useful. I was so used to like touching the camera over there and then kind of pressing record, but I find myself getting so much faster when I'm pressing the record and literally timing it already perfectly because I don't have this little bit of the weird timing when I'm touching the camera and then checking and then starting recording. I can literally balance, okay, I want this shot, press record, boom, I'm shooting. It saves times and it's so, so, so helpful. I've been using that feature a lot. And the zoom button on the handle as well. If you have Sony cameras, for example, then you can map the zoom on the camera as clear image zoom, which means that you can get these vertical effects and get it done already on the camera, which means you don't have to do it in post. You can do it straight on here and you can zoom in, zoom out, it's absolutely useful, very much enjoy that as well. If you are shooting a lot of manual and maybe you want to quickly pull focus to your subject and then keep co continuing shooting manual, then this um, shutter release button here is very, very useful. But I haven't used it so much because I find that when I'm shooting with my gimbal, you know, especially the wedding scenarios, I'm shooting on autofocus all the time. So I'm not using that very much, but just a good cool feature to still have on the gimbal. I'd like to talk to you about camera weight presets. So basically this gimbal has already built in camera weight presets. I don't know if you have any of these older gimbals, but I have the Pilotfly H245, which is still like one of my favorite gimbals and I'm using this all the time. If you haven't seen the review of that video, I'm gonna leave it up there. But on that one, you have to like kind of get the settings done on the gimbal on the computer before you were using this. You know, you were, you were adjusting the power and the thing and the weight of the motors and things like that to adjust your camera, whatever camera you were shooting for the gimbal to get the most optimized performance and less 
you know, shake and things on the motors. Whereas this one, listen to this, this is amazing. You have these presets built in. So let's say you have something small, you have something like a RX100, is if you're a Sony shooter, like a, just a point and shoot camera and you wanna use it on here. What you literally do is press this camera button once because the first preset is like zero to 500 grams. And then I don't know exactly how many presets there are, there are about four presets or something like that. And then you literally just tap the button whatever camera weight you're using. So you can quickly change between the cameras and then by just pressing these presets, you can quickly change between different camera weights and adjust to your camera, whatever you're shooting. Now, another cool thing is that if you're using actually this Pilotfly plate, like quick release plate that comes with the gimbal, then actually this plate is compatible with the Manfrotto tripods. So you can literally put it on your monopod or tripod which is very, very useful. Although one of the drawbacks of this is that if you have a Manfrotto plate, that plate doesn't go on the Pilotfly one, so it's a bit odd. So the Pilotfly one goes on the Manfrotto ones, but Manfrotto ones don't go on the Pilotfly ones. Now, if you do want to add like another monitor or another microphone, for example, there are quarter inch screw holes on both sides of the handle and on the bottom. On the bottom, I've used it for the tripod, little tripod that comes with it that I absolutely like as well. It's really nice to have that really quick to put it down and everything. One of the other things are the shortcuts that I like about the usability is that it's got the mode buttons that you can change different lock axes, but also the, the joystick, when you press that down, there are a few shortcuts. So for example, if you press it twice, it flips around. And if you press it twice again, it flips around the other way. So if you wanna go to selfie mode, that is very quick way. Wait. If you tap it four times, it's in time-lapse mode. If you tap it five times, it's the repeat time-lapse mode. One of the other cool thing is if I tap it, tap it three times, watch this. The motors are off now. So literally I can save you know, let's say I'm not shooting anything, I can save the battery by pressing it three times and then pressing it three times again. And then boom, the motors are on again. So let's say you've been left on a weird position and you wanna go back to the home position, all you do is go to the mode button, hold it down, and then boom, it's just gonna flick to the home position. So one of my favorite shortcuts is the all axis lock button. So watch this. So let's say at the moment you can see that it's following every single axis what I'm doing, all my hand movements. But let's say I'm doing something and then now when I press down the joystick, press and hold it, it's actually locked axis. So look, the axis is locked. So I can do literally just like a quick slide and then it now it starts following my hand again. Now this is absolutely amazing. I mean, how cool is that? That is just really cool. Another cool thing is that if you have a longer lens, you do have a lens support on the quick release plate. So if you have one of those very front heavy lenses, you can actually get a bit of support there. Also, one of the other things that they have improved is the joystick. Now the previous joystick used to be like a bit of a curve or mountain, whereas this is like a valley, if you know what I mean. Like it's dipped in and it's got a bit more grip on it, which is much better to use than actually on the top. Your thumb literally perfectly slots into there and it's very easy to navigate the joystick. So one of the last things that I think is absolutely amazing with this gimbal is the actual stabilization and actually the performance because however they've been configured the software inside these motors and how it like just knows and follows your hand movements and uh, things like that that is absolutely amazing and you can see later how smooth the footage is and it gives you some absolutely awesome results now let's talk about the bad sides the things that I think you should know before buying this gimbal are the things that I don't like about this gimbal very much. Now, the first thing that I've found, and I'm not sure if this is just about my gimbal or is it about all the models of Adventure, maybe mine is a little bit different, I don't know how, and especially Lay McCall, if you're watching this video, please let me know in the comment section below if you have that problem as well, because I know you're, what, uh, you're the only one who's doing these reviews on YouTube about this gimbal as well. But my biggest problem is the horizon drift. I've found that it's so, so, so annoying to me. When I'm, when I'm shooting and I can see on my camera level built inside that the horizon goes off. There are a few ways how you can correct that. And at first I thought it's the gyroscope inside and it's configuring, 
which actually isn't the problem because I've done it many, many times and I'm still continuing to have that problem. It's not all the time and it's totally usable and I'm still using this gimbal all the time, but it's just one of those things that I wish there was a quick correction and would not happen. The Pilotfly H245, for example, if you had that problem over there, what you literally do is take hold of the roll axis and then just pull it straight. Whereas on this one, you cannot do that. It just completely turns off or goes mental. So this is one of the things that I wish was somehow improved and I'm not sure if it's, this is just ab about this gimbal. You should check the comment section below. You probably get some answers over there. Now, the second thing that you should know about this is that if you thinking about using this gimbal with a battery grip, it's not going to work. Now this pitch axis here or this little L bracket over here that's attached to the pitch axis is not long enough and it can't be any longer because it's gonna hit that roll axis on the back here. It's probably because they've tried to keep it compact and small but what that means that if you want to use a battery grip for example I'm shooting always with the battery grip on this one and on my other camera or if you have like a 1DX or even though the payload it can support it but because just the center of the gravity is so high and you need to put it further down, you can't balance the gimbal. So one of the last things that I'd like to mention or something that I've, I think I found is that the app on the Android is not completely optimized for the Android phone. It's optimized for the iOS and for if you have iPhone or iPad, it works much, much better than on the Android one. I just wish that the Android version would work as well as the iOS one. And because I'm an Android shooter, I would get a bit better mobile functions with the gimbal. So now in conclusion, you're thinking, why should I be looking into this gimbal if there's Ronin S and all these other gimbals out there, Zhihun Grain, for example. Then one of the main things that I think why you should be looking into this is the size of the gimbal. Now this gimbal is very, very small. You get a nice bag with it. If you wanna see the unboxing video and what the bag is like, what's it comes in there, I'm gonna link it up there so you can check that one out as well. I just think how the usability, the form factor of the gimbal and how it actually performs in terms of the stabilization is just very, very good. And they've reduced the price. I just think overall, this gimbal is a really, really, really good package. And I've got to give it another shout out to the Pilotfly customer service. Now I've heard that some other gimbal companies don't have this awesome customer service where Pilotfly, oh, they are very, very, very good with the customer service. Even if I've had a few issues, they've been very quick responding. They've been fixing the problems without any, any cost. It's absolutely amazing. Now, if you're wondering what was the problem, then check out this video over there as well. It was just my stupidity really, and it's something that you should be looking out to as well. Don't do this with your gimbal. If you do that, you're probably gonna wreck it. So just check out so you wouldn't do that with your gimbal. Now, because it is a tech notice channel, we have to give it a T and rating. So let's do that real quick. Design wise, I'm gonna give it a five because it's just looks really awesome. That leather grip over here, the little tripod, the metal design, it's just really, really cool. All these little red trims over there as well. I just think it gives it a nice premium touch. Quality, now this is German quality. It's proper awesome gimbal. It's just five. Performance, how does it perform? The most important thing for this is, I'm gonna give it a 4.5 and it loses the 0.5 stars just because of my experience with the horizon drift and i wish there was a quick way to adjust that and there really isn't unless you switch between two, two separate modes which means you know let's say you go from all axis mode to only follow your your axis and then going back to the first one then it boom balances goes back to the horizon there is no real fast way to fixing this usability how easy it is to use oh it's very very awesome to use it they're very much thought about who's actually using it to make their life easier. So it's gonna get a five as well. Innovation, I'm gonna give it a four because there is not too much different, but there's just too, few little tweaks and the size and uh, how you're using this gimbal and little things inside, how they've used the software and thought about the actual customer that has been innovated the gimbal industry and knowing that actually some much, much, much bigger gimbal companies actually copy their design, which means 
they've thought about it and they've thought about it before everybody else. Innovation for Price versus quality, how much do you get for your price? Now this, I'm gonna give it a five as well because it's very competitive with all the other gimbals that are out there. I think it's around 600, 700 pounds. Just check the link in the description where you can get the gimbal just for the latest price. It's very much up there with all the other DJI, Jihoon, uh, Pilot Flight. So they're all there. So what you get for your price is amazing. Five. So the TN rating is 4.75 stars, which is very, very, very high rating. Now comes the part where you can actually see some of the stabilization and we're gonna go outside so you can see this gimbal actually be forming. But before we do that, remember to hit like on this video if you found this helpful and subscribe if you haven't already because videos like these are coming out every single week. If you do have any other questions, comment below i will meet you in there i was gonna put the stabilization test just over here now but then i looked at the timeline it's already 15 minutes in so to keep things more organized and simple i've made a separate video which you can check out over there because some people just want to you know watch one video so you can check it out over there and subscribe over there oh if, if that video is not available yet well then don't worry it's gonna be soon because it takes time to publish yeah, come on, check it out of there.